Hello all you magical folk, welcome back to my channel. I oh, did that completely wrong. <laughs> Hello all you magical folk, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. So today's video, actually I have a quick side note. Yeah, Um. first of all I apologise for not uploading on Wednesday. I was very, very naughty not doing that. I just had a really bad off kind of couple days. Um. So I just didn't end up uploading on Wednesday. Very, very naughty of me. But I am uploading today so I hope that kind of makes up for it that I've been on schedule for today at least. But another side note is that this idiot right here has broken her toe. Yes, I dropped a very large and very heavy pure metal butter knife straight onto my next to my big toe toe and yeah, it broke because apparently they just are very, very fragile. So yeah, I've broken my toe. So I am in absolute agony for most of the time, but I'm being very brave. I'm being a big girl. I'm being a brave girl and I'm just getting on with it. It does hurt, but it's not that bad really. So yeah, that's been my day. <laughs> Anyway, about today's video. So I was having a little look over my magical shelves, which you can partly see here. This is some of my magical shelves, but I do also have two larger shelves. That's four. Two larger shelves that are over there currently that you can't see. Um, a, because they're still in boxes, and B, because they're off camera, so you can't see them. But yeah, they are still in their boxes and they need to go up, but we are waiting for the new flooring to go down in here before we can get those up. And with being in and out of these lockdowns every two minutes, we can't get people actually in to do the work. So yeah, they've kind of taken a bit of a side step with doing those, but they will be built hopefully soon because we are coming out of um, our lockdown now very, very shortly. So hopefully they will go up soon and I will start to decorate those. But whilst I was kind of perusing through these sets of shelves, I kind of just naturally started putting them into sort of movie themed shelves. Like I've got the Philosopher's Stone shelf, this shelf um, that you can partly see, Luna's actually on the wrong shelf. You're not supposed to be there. Down Luna. So this partly is a Chamber of Secrets slash Prisoner of Azkaban shelf. The main reason is because I don't have a lot of stuff for either of those two movies to display. Um, and also partly I think some of the items I have may be in storage. So I can't remember exactly what's going on with those shelves at the moment. And then down here, which you can't see fully, this is all rubbish, ignore this. But what you can't see on camera is my Goblet of Fire section, which again is looking rather empty. So whilst I was kind of setting these shelves up, I was kind of thinking to myself, what am I missing? Where are the gaps and what can I pop into the gaps? Where can I get more magical things to fill these shelves up and make them look really, really amazing? Now, my Philosopher's Stone shelf is very, very full. Now, my Philosopher's Stone shelf has a whole heap of magical goodness on here. We have pretty much everything that I kind of relate to the first film and book. So obviously we have like Ron, we have the Hermione, we have the birthday cake from Hagrid, we have the chess pieces from one of the tasks, we have the Remember All, we have Hagrid's flute, we have the big chess piece with Ron, uh, the Philosopher's Stone itself, the Mirror of Erised, Chocolate Frogs. We have a whole, whole heap of magical things on that shelf. And yeah, it is crammed full. I'm hoping once the bigger shelves go up that I can kind of transport that shelf onto the large shelves because there'll be a lot more room. It'll look a lot less cluttered. Um, but yeah, that will be a work in progress. Things that I'm actually missing from that particular shelf and like I said, from the other shelves as well, I was kind of looking down and I was thinking to myself, you know what, I need to put out like a, a video where I talk about the things that I'm missing and hopefully some of the subscription box companies may see this video and maybe be taking notes about the things that I'm missing off of my shelves. And I suppose like a lot of other collectors are missing from their shelves also and maybe take note and think, hmm, that's a good idea. Maybe we can make that and have it in our subscription box, which is very, very good. And I hope that they do watch this and take note because it would be very, very cool if some of this stuff started popping up in subscription boxes. So that kind of got me thinking about making a list of items that I'm missing from each of my shelves. I'm not going to do all seven uh, books or films. Obviously the films had eight films, but you know what I mean? I'm not gonna do all seven of them in this video. I'm only gonna go up to the Goblet of Fire because those are the four shelves that I've currently kind of started to build. And I'll do the other three books maybe in a later video once I kind of start making those shelves up as well. So for the time being anyway, I've got a little notebook in front of me with all the bits and bobs that I feel like I would love to have added to my shelves. And hopefully the subscription box companies will take note. So 
So starting with the Philosopher's Stone shelf, like I said, it is very cramped and it has got an awful lot of stuff on there. So I'm not really missing an awful lot of things, but I did have a couple of little ideas that I thought would be a good idea. So the first one is to have a mini trunk replica. I thought this was a really, really sweet idea because um, a lot of the trunks that you can buy at the moment are quite expensive. They're on the larger side. Obviously, you get the big ones from Platform 9 and 3 quarters, and then you get the even bigger ones from Platform 9 and 3 quarters, and they are quite expensive. Well worth the money, I completely, you know, I don't take that away from them, but they are a little bit on the more expensive side, and obviously, they're very large, and they're not always easy to display or to have out everyday life. So I figured a little small replica would be absolutely great to put onto your shelves. And I have actually said about with this one, because obviously the um, initials for each student are on these trunks. Um, and obviously you can't do that for every single person that is buying a subscription box, because that would take a whole heap of organising and too much faff, too much faff. So I kind of figured that they would come blank, and then if you wanted to add your own letters to your little mini trunks, you can always do that yourself. Either you can paint them or you can buy vinyl stickers, somewhere along those lines, and add your own initials to your trunk if you so choose. But yeah, I thought that was a really, really sweet idea. Another idea that I had was indeed the Nimbus 2000. Now I've seen a lot of little kind of toy kind of versions of the Nimbus 2000. I've seen them as like pens. I've seen them as all sorts of little bits and bobs. But I haven't actually seen a really nice, decent replica that you can just pop onto your shelves, even if it's got like a little stand or even if it's just the broom itself and you can kind of prop it up. I think that would be a really, really cute idea because I haven't got anything Nimbus 2000 related on my shelves. So this is kind of just my interpretation of what I need and what I want because it's all about me. <laughs> I hope a lot of other people like want this stuff too but this was kind of what my mindset was like what do I want for my shelves what's missing from my collection that maybe is missing from everyone else's as well so yeah I definitely want to have something Nimbus 2000 related because I'm missing one that is literally everything I kind of could think of for my Philosopher's Stone shelf because I pretty much everything else that kind of popped into my head was already there oh I just had a thought actually I didn't pop this in my in my book but I've literally just had a ping light bulb moment. Um, fluffy. I haven't got a fluffy. I need a fluffy. I need a fluffy. <laughs> Does that sound wrong? <laughs> fluffy. I would love to see a little mini fluffy replica. That would be too adorable. And I think that would look amazing. And that would definitely 110% complete my Philosopher's Stone shelf. So moving on to my Chamber of Secrets shelf. Now, like I said, my Chamber of Secrets shelf and my Prisoner of Azkaban shelf currently are on the same shelf. So I've kind of just got them separated down the middle and I've kind of just put the few little bits and bobs that I have of those two films and of the two books into the one kind of shelf. Um, but as you can see on my uh, Chamber of Secrets side, it's a lot fuller than my Prisoner of Azkaban shelf. So I definitely took note for those shelves of what kind of things I'm missing. So the first one um, is a Dobby replica. Now, I'm very hopeful. I know that Geek Gear are bringing out an elf relocation box the end of this month, I believe. I could be wrong with the shipping time of that, but I believe it's at the end of November that those boxes will ship out. Now, as soon as they went up for sale, I nabbed myself one because I missed out on the Toil and Trouble box. I was gutted. And as soon as the Elf Relocation one came out, I was like, I am not missing out on this one. It sounded amazing. The box looks unbelievable. So I was like, yeah, 100% have to get hold of this box. So I'm praying, keeping everything crossed, apart from my toe because it hurts. Um, then we get some kind of Dobby replica or our very own unnamed elf that we can still pop on that shelf because that still counts in my eyes. Or maybe I could put it on the Goblet of Fire shelf because obviously you see a lot more elves in the Goblet of Fire. So either way, but a Dobby replica would be amazing. Um, if not, some form of house elf would be. Another thing I want to see from the Chamber of Secrets is a Howler. I want to have a Howler replica, not just like a paper one. I mean, a paper one would be awesome too, to be fair. So they could kind of do this like in two different ways. They could have a proper, decent paper replica version of one, or they could just have like a little mini figurine of one. I think either way would be absolutely adorable. I do have the Ron Pop Funko on my Chamber of Secrets shelf where he's holding the Howler. So I kind of do have that represented, but I just thought like a, a bigger one would be really really cute another figurine idea i had for the chamber of secret shelf was of course forks the phoenix i do have again a little pop funko version of forks and it's too adorable 
but that at the moment is kind of living over there on my Disney shelf because that's where I keep my magical creatures apparently. But I do have like a little magical creatures section within my glass unit. So that's where Fox is currently living. So I kind of feel like I need to have that as my magical creatures. And then over on the Chamber of Secrets shelf, I do just need like a little mini Fox. Maybe on like a stand, like his little golden stand. That would be too adorable. Yeah, I think that would be really, really sweet to have. Okay, so the next idea I had was um, Gilderoy Lockhart popped into my head. Not a lot of stuff about Gilderoy Lockhart seems to be about. You don't get a lot of reference to Gilderoy Lockhart. You don't really see a lot of the stuff that he um, kind of is because I don't suppose there's an awful lot of stuff. He is literally just in the Chamber of Secrets and everything that he does is false. Like obviously everything he claimed to have done um, was a lie so you don't really get to have a lot of Gilderoy Lockhart stuff anyway because of that fact but I think maybe having like a little mini replica of one of his books would be cute obviously in his first defense against dark arts class you do see him have a cage of pixies so maybe like a little cage with a couple pixies in it would be really adorable to have like a little sort of figurine of that would be absolutely glorious I think I know we had a t-shirt um, going back probably a little while ago now, we had a t-shirt with the cage and all the pixies inside the cage. And I love that t-shirt. It remains one of my favourite t-shirts. But to have like a little mini replica cage with some pixies in it would be amazing. Something I have seen quite a few replicas of um, in different places, but I just haven't managed to get hold of one personally myself for whatever reason, is a mini Ford Anglia. I would love to have a little mini Ford Anglia car just to stick on my shelf. Nothing too crazy, nothing too big. I don't want anything like massive. Just like a little mini replica of the Ford Anglia. Um, maybe with Harry, Ron and the Hedwig sort of in the car, like obviously if it was like to be painted with them in it or something along those lines, that would be kind of cute. But if not, just the actual car itself would be more than enough for me. And I think that would look absolutely awesome on my shelf. I think I actually have a lot of ideas for this one. I think this is like my most, because I think it's not really my most empty shelf, but I have the most ideas for it. I don't know how I've sort of managed that. But yeah, another idea I had was an Aragog figure. So similar, I suppose, because we've got like a little chocolate frog up on my Philosopher's Stone shelf. Um, so, so I suppose like done similarly to that would be really, really sweet to have like an Aragog. Um, he is terrifying and I don't really like spiders. I don't like, I'm not scared of spiders. I just don't like spiders. I don't want them to touch me. I'm like, ugh, don't like spiders. But to have like a little mini Aragog wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I'd pop him on my shelf and he could live like in a dark corner of my shelf or something. Like build him like a little nest. That's weird. But yeah, I think to have like a little mini Aragog would be very sweet too. Okay, this one, I don't know how doable this is, but it, this image popped into my head. I was like, hmm, could they do that in any way, shape or form? Like, I don't mind if this is on a t-shirt or something along those lines. I don't really want it in print form because I wouldn't put it on my wall, but as a t-shirt, I probably would be okay with that. I would get away with that. But yeah, I kind of loved the um, the aesthetic of the Salazar Slytherin kind of carved statue within the Chamber of Secrets. You know, the big one and the snake comes out of his mouth at some point as well. So I think having that as like a t-shirt design or even like a mini replica, again, I don't know how you would do that, but that's kind of my thought process to have something that I could stick right maybe at the back of my shelf and kind of like it'd be like the background. I don't know how I would do it. Maybe as a print. I don't know. I definitely don't have all the answers. I kind of just spew stuff that I want to see and hopefully someone along the lines will pick it up and go, hmm, I can actually turn that into ah, some other signs. You know what I mean? So I'm just trying to give ideas. That's, that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, yes, so the last one I have for the Chamber of Secrets, very, very similar to the Philosopher's Stone. I want a Nimbus 2001, please. Um, I think that's a quite an iconic scene in the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, I just have another thought too. Haven't noted it down, but I've just had a light bulb moment yet again. Have those quite often. Anyway, um, yeah, so a Nimbus 2000 replica, similarly to the Nimbus 2000, no, Nimbus 2001 replica, similarly to the Nimbus 2000, would be amazing to have. And you could have them, like, side by side if you chose to, like, if you're doing something different to what I've done with, like, the separated films and movies, or you could have them side by side if you preferred. That would be okay, too. But yeah, I thought that would be really cute. Now for the light bulb moment. I had a moment a second ago of Ron spewing slugs. That needs to be depicted somehow. I know, again, you can get the Pop Funko version. Um, and I want that version. I haven't got that one yet. I want that version. But yeah, maybe a bucket of slugs. <laughs> Would 
that not just be gross? Probably. But um, yeah, that, that thought just popped into my head. Maybe that would be quite a funny thing to have like a like old fashioned bucket, like what Hagrid gives him in the film to puke up the slugs. And maybe just have like a couple of like colorful slugs like crawling out of it and stuff. Yeah, gross, but fun, fun, definitely fun. <laughs> I apologize for like me. Don't know what is going on with me today. I'm not even on any pain medication because I'm weird and don't take painkillers. So I can't even blame that. Anyway, so Prisoner of Azkaban shelf, last but one shelf. This is actually um, one of my most empty shelves, but still I don't have an awful lot of ideas for this one written down. Um, I may have more light bulb moments hopefully in the future. And if anyone has any ideas, by the way, I, since me blabbing on, definitely pop them in the comments down below because I'd love to hear what kind of ideas you guys have as well. Because I think as a community and as a Harry Potter fans, it's kind of up to us to put out there into the universe what we want to see more of. And I think then people might spot these kind of posts and these kind of videos and they might actually turn it into a thing. You never know. Oh, it's gone dark. Um, Yeah, so starting off with Prisoner of Azkaban is, of course, the Grim or Sirius Black in dog form. I haven't got anything that actually depicts Sirius Black in this way. So you could literally have... Um, again, similarly, I suppose, to the way they've done the chocolate frog and the way I propose that they do the Aragog figure, they could have a big black dog and obviously it'd be serious. I think that would be really, really cool. It would definitely fit well, I think, just here, just sat next to the, the night bus where obviously you first kind of see him in dog form. He would look really sweet right there. Or maybe not sweet because he kind of comes across as really gnarly at first. Um, another figurine idea I had was a Dementor. A Dementor figurine would be awesome. I haven't seen anything along those lines. I could be wrong. I'm, you know, obviously I don't see everything in the world. So there could be figurines of Dementors out there, but I've yet to see one. So I'd be very, very intrigued to get a Dementor figurine in a subscription box of some kind or somewhere along those lines, because I think they're awesome. So creepy, but so cool to look at. So I would love one. And again, it would look very, very nice on my Prisoner of Azkaban shelf. He would look very, very cool, I think. Okay, this is not really an idea, but more of a continuation of this, I suppose, because I've seen it recently, um, the magical creatures that Noble Collection do, and obviously they have a variety of these creatures and other bits and bobs as well for the Wizarding World. And there's a Buckbeak one that sort of stood on the pumpkin patch, but I haven't got around to buying that yet. And to get something like that in a subscription box would be pretty awesome as well. Maybe if it was just like a bit different to what the Noble Collection one looks like. So maybe you could have like Buckbeak lying next to a pumpkin and having that kind of scene where he's led in the pumpkin patch outside of Hagrid's. Or maybe like when he's like all majestic and he's with Harry. So you could even have like an almost in flight version of him. Still like on a stand so it wouldn't have to be like floating around your house because how would you achieve that? But like... Something along those lines. So it's kind of the similar kind of thing, but still different for a subscription box, if you get me. So it's not just an exact copy. But yeah, I would love to have a Buckbeak on my shelf. I hopefully will get that uh, Magical Creatures one eventually anyway. But again, that would probably be something I would stick over on my Fantastic Beasts section, not necessarily on the Chamber of Secrets section. That's the wrong film. Prisoner of Azkaban. That's the one I'm talking about right now. So yeah, he would go amazingly on my Prisoner of Azkaban shelf, as well as having a Buckbeak for my Fantastic Beast section. And the one last figure kind of came to me when I was looking at, I'll show you. Oh, this was the Thestral that we got in a very recent Geek Gear box. Now I was kind of staring at this the other day and my imagination kind of went a bit cuckoo and I kind of saw a stag so I figured you could have a Patronus stag similarly to this, like on its stand, and there's just obviously a stag instead of being a Thestral. And you could kind of have it like a silvery blue kind of colour. So it would look like a glowing uh, stag Patronus. I thought that would look amazing. And I think that that would be really, really something that went down amazingly well. I think people would get a massive, massive kick out of that. So that is everything I have for my Prisoner of Azkaban shelf. I am quickly going to go through some of my Goblet of Fire ideas. Like I said, this is the last shelf that I've kind of already started to build. Um, but yeah, don't have an awful lot on here just yet. So um, for the Goblet of Fire, the first thing I had in my mind, again, I'm trying to think of like figurines and mini replicas. That's the kind of thing that I, I feel like I'm missing from my shelves. So I instantly thought of a mermaid from obviously the second task. We see one old a trident up to Harry and he's like, only one. Yeah, he looks really creepy. Um, so I figured like having a slightly angry looking mermaid figurine with the trident kind of like 
come at me, Harry, come on. <laughs> I thought that would be really, really sweet slash slightly creepy, but I think that would look amazing on my shelf. And I think it's something that, again, I haven't really seen much of the mermaids depicted in this kind of fandom. So I haven't um, seen anything that I could buy myself to get something like that in a subscription box would be totally awesome. And yeah, I think that would look cool as. I was actually very recently um, re-reading The Goblet of Fire. I was saying reading it. I was listening to the audiobook, but that still counts. So I, I've literally just uh, finished listening to uh, Harry Potter and The Goblet of Fire. And I forgot to take notes as I was listening to it, to be honest. So I probably could have come up with a lot more ideas. But I was kind of just thinking back to um, the bits and bobs that you didn't see in the film but really needed some representation. Like the Blast Ended Scroots, for example. We don't really get anything from the Blast Ended Scroots. I don't think they're ever really mentioned in the films. I could be wrong. It could be a very, very small mention if they are, but yeah, they don't really get mentioned at all. So I think having a Blast Ended Scroot figurine or replica would be really, really cool. Also in the uh, maze task, which is again, something that they completely missed out of the film. And I was devastated because this was like one of my favorite parts because I love riddles. Riddles are, I'm not very good at them, but I do love a good riddle. I really love to try to figure it out. So obviously the um, Sphinx is in the maze and he challenges Harry or she challenges Harry. Sorry, it's got a face of a woman. Um, she challenges Harry with a riddle that he has to then come up with the answer for. And I had this image in my head of the Sphinx and how exactly that she would look. And it's kind of creepy, but really cool at the same time. So I think having like a little Sphinx replica would be awesome. And it would be nice to see that the uh, maze task is actually represented well for a change because we don't see any of that in the film. So we don't really get any replicas or any kind of um, reference to the maze other than it just being a bushed maze. Sounds really boring. And as a task to watch, it was really, really boring. Like in retrospect, it was. There wasn't an awful lot of difficulty other than trying to find your way through it which obviously is hard um but they you know there's no encounters with the bogart dementor there's no encounters with the blast ended scroots there's no encounter with the sphinx um i mean you do see crumb kind of being overtaken and attacking um i think it's fleur and obviously then tries to attack uh, cedric and harry but other than that there's no real obstacles within the maze task that you see in the film so for me, that's definitely something that they, they made a mistake on and they missed out. Like they could have easily turned the Goblet of Fire into a two-parter film. Um, and I would have been for that, to be fair. I literally would, if they could include every aspect of the book into the films and then be like four days long each, I would sit through that. <laughs> I'd obviously have to take like toilet breaks and stuff, but I'd totally be on board with that. I really, really would. But yeah, something along those lines, I think would be really awesome. Now, this idea actually came to me in a previous Geek Gear box. We had a hint for the Goblet of Fire. And I was really excited thinking, oh my God, are we going to get a Goblet of Fire mini replica? Now, sadly, we didn't. We had a print instead. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the print. Sorry, Geek Gear. You know, I love the like, Geek Gear items. and You know, I love Geek Gear boxes. But yeah, I wasn't impressed with the print because for one, the fire in the print was red, not blue. And that kind of just put me off a little bit. And it just wasn't the kind of print I put up in my, in my house. I'm not, I'm, I am and I'm not. I'm not particularly fussy per se. I love all things Harry Potter, but when it comes to artwork, it's gotta be something specifically that I can really attach myself to, to actually frame it and put it up on my walls. Like the ones behind me. I do have more of these, these ones here um, to go up. They just haven't gone up just yet. Now this one came out of the Cherry Wallace box. I absolutely adore it. And this one came out of the Luna Love Good box, which again, I absolutely adore. I think it's gorgeous. And I have a couple of other ones that I haven't framed yet that are in the process of being framed and put up on the wall. So, you know, I'm, I do love the artwork in most instances but not every single one of them I will put up on my wall that's just personal taste and preferences people might not like the ones I've got behind me and prefer other ones and that's perfectly fine that's perfectly down to your own preferences um but yeah I was kind of disappointed in the print because I was kind of building it up in my head that it was going to be this little mini replica of the Goblet of Fire so yeah that's my next idea I think that a mini replica of the Goblet of Fire itself not just the Triwizard Cup which we do have on the shelf because we had that in a fairly recent Geek Gear box, all for that, that was gorgeous. Um, but yeah, we just need the Goblet of Fire now. The next idea I had, again, similarly to the Salazar Slytherin um, statue, if you even can call it that, is the grave of Tom Riddle. That obviously when Harry gets transported to the graveyard and he gets sort of trapped onto the bones of Tom Riddle Sr. 
um you kind of got this like death figure with like a scythe i think they're called and obviously he's the one that holds harry in place now to have that as like a mini replica i thought would be really really awesome a little bit on the spookier side a little bit on the more dark art side but yeah as a mini replica i thought that would be a really really good idea Okay, I'm not going to bore you for too much longer. This is my last idea, but I do think this is already a thing. I haven't seen it yet to confirm this, but I do think this is now going to be a thing. Um, We had a hint for the Geek Gears October special edition box that was a Death Eater mask. Now, I haven't got one of these on my shelves. The ones from Noble Collection are really, really expensive. Again, totally worth the money but just not something that I've yet to purchase because of the price tag. Hopefully one day I can buy that. But to get a mini replica of any of the Death Eater masks would look awesome. Like I said, I do think that is now a thing. I think in that special edition box, which I haven't seen being unboxed, no one seems to be unboxing them on their channels anymore. And I'm very disappointed about that because I love to see what is in the special edition boxes. I've never actually bought one myself. Again, just down to funds purely. Um, so I would love to see more unboxings of the special editions and I'm hoping that that special edition box does contain a Death Eater mask and then once um, obviously all the unboxings have gone out or the boxes have gone out that they will put them onto their website and I'll be able to purchase one myself because I have that image in my head that it's going to be awesome so I hope that is the thing and I hope that I can actually buy one myself to put on my shelves because yeah that would be amazing. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> ignore me. Anyway guys, so that was the video for today. Those were all my ideas for my shelves. Of course, I'm going to have some more ideas for the Half-Blood Prince, the Order of the Phoenix, the Deathly Hallows. I know I've done the other two books the wrong way round. That was just brain function not happening. But yeah, I do have more ideas for those shelves. It's just because I haven't actually got those shelves set up yet. I can't see what kind of things I'm missing and remind myself about the little bits and bobs that I would love to have in my collection. But hopefully in the near future, I can do that and kind of put out there what I would love to see from those three films. Because, yeah, they're some of the better, oh, they're sort of like the more involved films, I suppose, because they've gone, in my opinion, a little bit more in depth and into the stories, not just kind of skirted over some of the stuff like they did in Goblet of Fire. I think they skirted over a whole heap of stuff, which was just a bit gutting, really. But anywho, those are my ideas. I hope that you have similar ideas and would like to see similar things to what I've put out there. If you have any other ideas, pop a comment down below. Let me know what ideas you have. I would love, love, love to hear them. And yeah, thank you so much again for watching my video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a magical thumbs up for me so that I know. Don't forget, I didn't do this in my intro. Don't forget, if you are new to my channel and you haven't done already, then please hit the subscribe button to become part of my little magical community. Turn the notification bells on as well to be notified every time I upload a video and always check me out on my social media. Big shout out to Alas Earwax, who is my patron. If you are interested in finding out a little bit more about Patreon and how you can join, then the link will be in the description down below and you can go and check it out. But thanks so much again for watching, guys. I'll see you very soon. Bye.